Hello YouTube, this is Parth Sane here, coming up with another episode of the series on Ham Radio. We have uh, multiple uh, episodes coming up still, some on antenna building and uh, some more on power measurement and some theoretical concepts about grounding and so on. For now, uh, I'm going to be explaining the VUSDR software defined radio. It's a versatile software defined radio in the sense that we are able to do lots of uh, uh, algorithm processing on it on the computer uh, which makes our uh, entire uh, audio output to be very clear so the VUSDR software defined radio transceiver includes uh, ADC and DAC circuits of course we don't need to add any external sound cards uh, since uh, the radio itself has uh, some sound cards inbuilt and you don't need to worry about them like uh, you had in the Softrock RDX TX version where multiple uh, sound inputs and jacks were required into and out of the system. In this case, uh, we have uh, multiple devices on it, the 96kHz digital INQ interface then we are having the two tone, two kilohertz spacing, third order dynamic 99 uh, dB design. Then uh, we have a design which is truly multiband. And it is an all mode transceiver supports all modes. It has a DG8 SAQ or PEO FKO uh, or a software uh, uh, control interface that is we call. Uh, it's popularly known as a soft rock control interface. Then uh, the entire uh, firmware which is built into is uh, you can see this big chip over here. Uh, this chip has uh, the entire source code built for processing all of this data. It is a piece of controller and it is based on open source firmware. Uh, it has a USB uh, bootloader. Uh, the entire connections or the connectivity to the computer is via USB. As we can see, it has a USB port on this side. The USB port connects to the computer via a USB cable which has shielding with uh, anti-RFI uh, toroids inbuilt into it. Then uh, the, it has a TX output of 5 watts in total. These 5 watts vary according to band. I believe on 40 meters, 5 watts is the maximum that the radio can put up. On other bands, the power output might get reduced depending on the wavelength. Then of course, uh, we come back to the part for the software support. On Windows, this runs really well. It runs with HD SDR and Power SDR. Other operating systems have limited support for it, although Linux and uh, OS X, which are the other operating systems, which possibly have some kind of uh, software for them um, are uh, not really very good i suppose this is this is a relatively new transceiver supported by the open source community so those support uh, systems still have to be worked out then uh, going on with uh, the other things so it will cost you about 300 dollars uh, plus minus uh, depending on shipping uh, the base price is around $250 and uh, above it the shipping comes depending on shipping times to your country and shipping uh, possibilities uh, you have to tell me about it I'll try to get the radio for you if possible a group buy is uh, appreciated uh, will help lower down cost for people who want to get it now again this is uh, purely on a non-profit basis as I understand Sending stuff internationally is a bit expensive. The main objective of talking about VUSDR in uh, this particular episode is due to the fact that HF transceivers are uh, notoriously exp uh, expensive and not accessible to all because of affordability. If you compare the cost for actual HF radios which are all banned, this uh, this this particular radio I am sure will be your favorite if it actually is in your position at any moment of time so uh, 
guys uh, to all of the ham radio operators existing all over there in throughout throughout the globe rather keep calling CQ and help others that's what i can say and one more thing is that uh, guys uh, my twitter uh, handle is at the rate path advance and uh, you can follow me over there if you want to then always like you can always subscribe i mean there's no stopping you guys it's, oh, it's, it's it's exactly over here so keep watching guys and hope to see you soon